Hi there, it's Mr. Doro. This is our third installment of our nomenclature videos. This one's going to introduce polyatomic ions. And by the end of this, I'm hoping you'll be able to name and write formulas for ionic compounds that contain polyatomic ions. Stay tuned. Well, the first thing we need to do is find out what a polyatomic ion is. When we break down the word, poly means more than one, atomic means atoms, and ion means it has a charge. I got a couple examples of polyatomic ions here. You can see that it has more than one type of atom because it has two, at least two capital letters. It also has a charge. This says two minus. Sometimes I write minus two, but this has a two minus charge. That's an overall charge for everything here. All together, it has gained two electrons, and so that's why it has a minus two charge. This is the ammonium ion. It has two atoms, different types of um, elements. And this has overall a plus one charge. Now polyatomic ions don't like to break apart very easily. So normally they just stay together the way they, the way they are. They join up with other ions in order to make a stable compound. On the back of your periodic table, you have a list of common ions. Some of them are metal ions, some are non-metal ions, and some are polyatomic ions. So if you take a look at this, on this side over here, these are all cations or positively charged ions and really there's only two of them that are polyatomic ions on this side the ammonium ion right up here NH4 with a one plus charge and the hydronium ion H3O with a one plus charge now this list is not a comprehensive list of all of the polyatomic ions but it is some of the common ions that we use the rest of these are all metals on this side and we'll talk more about some of the different charges on those metals in our next video but on this other side, for the anions, most of these on this side are polyatomic ions. You look at this first one right here, the acetate ion. It is C2H3O2 with a 1 minus or a minus 1 charge. And if we go down through here and look at most of these names of these polyatomic ions, you're going to see that most of them end in A-T-E or I-T-E, eight or ite. And so that's one way that you can recognize that a compound has a polyatomic ion. If it has a name that ends in eight or eight, not all of them though. Every once in a while you'll find one still that ends in IDE, like cyanide or hydroxide. You need to have your list of common ions out in order to name and write the formulas for these compounds with polyatomic ions though. So how do you recognize a compound with a polyatomic ion? How do you know it has one? Well, first of all, if it ends in eight or eight for our sakes, we're going to say it probably does have a polyatomic ion in order for us to be able to write the formula. But sometimes you're given the formula and you got to find out, does it have a polyatomic ion or do we just go by our binary compounds? These are not binary compounds when they have a polyatomic ion. This first one right here, this H2O, that's a binary compound. Two different um, two different elements and it is a binary molecular compound. Now a dead giveaway every time is if you see these parentheses like this, the parentheses will be written around a polyatomic ion and that's an easy way to find what the polyatomic ion is. It's not always that easy though. So this one does contain a polyatomic ion. This next one, Ca3N2, this one is a binary ionic compound and it does not contain a polyatomic ion. Ion. This one, CaSO4, that is a capital O in this one, and since it has more than, than two capital letters, that means more than two different types of elements, it's going to contain a polyatomic ion. Now, how do you find where the polyatomic ion is? Normally, a compound with a polyatomic ion will have a metal in the front. If it does have a metal, then everything after it is the polyatomic ion, and that four is part of the polyatomic ion. Back up in this CaC. 2H3O2. This 2 is not part of the polyatomic ion. It's outside the parentheses. So this one is a compound with a polyatomic ion. This next one, MgCO3. And when you look at that, that has three capital letters. This would be my polyatomic ion, CO3. It's a little harder sometimes when it doesn't have the parentheses. This NH4, oh, the reason why is because this is a metal too. And if, if it starts with a metal, the things after it are the polyatomic ion. NH4Cl, that does not have a metal. It is, does have a polyatomic ion, though, and there it is, the NH4. And then we just name the Cl just like normal. This FeNO33, there's the polyatomic ion inside the parentheses, so that one does have one. And this one, NaHCO3, this does have a polyatomic ion. It's right there, the HCO3, because the Na is a metal. So now we know how to recognize if something has a polyatomic ion. 
So how do you name compounds containing polyatomic ions? Well, I'll tell you what you don't do. You don't use prefixes. Prefixes are only needed if there are multiple ways to join these up. And since these are ionic compounds, you do not need, there's only one way to join them up, so you don't need to have the prefixes. Another thing is you never drop the ending of a polyatomic ion and add IDE. Now, if it's just a nonmetal at the end that's not part of the polyatomic ion, then you would drop the ending. But in the polyatomic ion, you just state it the way it is. You look on the back of your periodic table. For example, when you look at this first one, MgCO3, you'd say the name of the metal, which is magnesium. Whoopsie. Magnesium. I'll fix it. Watch this. There it goes. Magnesium. And then CO3 from the back of your periodic table is carbonate. And so this is magnesium. I ran out of room right there. Carbonate. This next one right here, this is calcium. So we just write calcium. And then we look in the parentheses, C2H3O2. I'm looking for the exact that exact formula on the back of my periodic table. That is the acetate ion. So this is just calcium acetate. Very easy to name these compounds. So now we need to write formulas for compounds with polyatomic ions. First of all, we need to write the formula for each ion, check the charges, and crisscross and put parentheses on them if they're needed. So when I look at this first one, calcium sulfate. Calcium is Ca. Sulfate from the back of my periodic table is SO4. I check the charges. This has a 2 minus charge. This has a 2 plus charge. They cancel each other out. So I like to rewrite them so that they're nice and clean. And so I, then since they cancel out, I, have to, I do not have to crisscross. And it's just CaSO4. No parentheses on there whatsoever. You only need parentheses if you need multiples of the polyatomic ion. So it's just CaSO4 is my answer for that one. For magnesium nitrate, that's nitrate that I have on there. That is Mg. Nitrate is NO3 with a 1 minus charge. Magnesium has a 2 plus charge, and they do not cancel out, so I have to crisscross. Remember when we crisscross, that 2 comes down here, but I don't just write a 2 right like that because that would look like 32 oxygens. The 1 I never take down, and so in order to rewrite this correctly, I have to have two sets of NO3. So I write Mg parentheses, NO3 end parentheses 2. That is magnesium nitrate. That's the only time I need parentheses when I need multiples of them. Alright, so here are some examples that we're going to do together. It's really important that you look at the back of your periodic table as you're doing this though too, so you can see where I'm getting all this information from. The first three are names that I want you to write the formula for. So aluminum nitrate is our first one. And so aluminum, the symbol is AL. Nitrate is NO3 with a 1 minus charge. And aluminum has a 3 plus or a plus 3 charge. They don't cancel out, so I got a crisscross. Remember that 3 is going to come down here. And don't say a 3 is already there the, because that's part of nitrate. And so we are going to write this as AL. We never take the 1 down. We never take the, ch the sign down either. And so this is going to be ALNO3 taken three times. The next one, aluminum nitrate, very similar. It's AL, but nitrite is NO2 with a minus one charge. This still has a plus three charge. When we crisscross, we get ALNO2 taken three times. You may say that's the same thing, but it's not. Sodium thiosulfate, sodium is Na. Thiosulfate is S2O3 with a minus 2 or a 2 minus charge. Sodium from the periodic table has a 1 plus charge, and so they do not cancel out. The 2 is going to come on down over here. The 1 would come down there, but we never take a 1 down. And so we rewrite this. This is going to be Na2, S2O3. No parentheses needed on that one because we didn't need multiples of the polyatomic ion. For this next one, we have sodium, and then we have a polyatomic ion, so this is going to be sodium, and then sodium uh, HCO3. There are actually two names for it. You could call that hydrogen carbonate, or you could call it bicarbonate. I'm a little bit lazy, so I'm going to write the shorter one, sodium bicarbonate. The next one, Mg, and then ClO4, tw taken twice. This is going to be magnesium and then the ClO4 is 
perchlorate, P-E-R-C-H-L-O-R-T-E, magnesium perchlorate. Even though it's taken twice, that doesn't matter. That was just to cancel out the charges. And then finally, we have calcium and then this PO4, CA3PO42. I think that's that guy that was on Star Wars, CA3PO4. No, maybe not. Okay, but it is calcium, and then this is phosphate. And we just need to follow those rules each time. Okay, now you have all the necessary information that you need to do these problems. There are eight problems. The first four, you've got to write the formulas for them. The next four, you have to write the names for them. So if you don't know what you're doing, if you feel like you get stuck, go back and take a look at some of the problems that I did in the past. All right, bye-bye.